Hello, it's Sarah, and today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial, just a quick tutorial on these star ornaments that I um, made. I had shown them previously when I shared my um, artist trading blocks, and I've made these out of stamps and paper and these paper mache stars. Um, they have all uh, different shapes. I have circle, heart, and star here, but I also have this um, oval shape. So I think they're available now. It's um, already there's a lot of Christmas stuff out there, so you can go ahead and grab them. Um, my Michaels has them definitely. Um, so for today, I thought we'd do this little snowman one because, <clears throat> excuse me, there's not a lot of coloring to this because obviously if you're going to do white. Well, when you're coloring with Copics, people use the BG10, I think it is, BG10, yeah, BG10, and you just put a little line around, and it's kind of like a shadow line. It's just giving them the illusion that there's shadow there, color on white, because my paper's white, and I do use the Nina Solar White cardstock when I color with my Copics, um, and so that's what I used. I did also just start another little artist trading block. And I did these little girls, these um, fairies, with uh, watercolor paper. And I colored these with my distress markers because I'm running out, and I'm also running out of the skin tone of the distress markers too, but I need to figure out or look into um, ink for your pens. My, a lot of my pens are running out of color. So when we do some coloring, you might hear some squeakiness, but that means I need to re-ink my pen. So I got to look into that. Um, so for today, we're going to, like I said, we're going to work on this little guy. So you're going to need a paper mache star or any shape, but these guys really fit nicely on the star because of the tall snowman. Um, <clears throat> I also picked my stamps, and these stamps happen to be Lawn Fawn. These are the Critters in the Snow. Um, stamp set and it has these cute little critters. I'm gonna do uh, a couple more while I'm after I'm done I'm gonna work on a couple more for my um, craft show um, No, that's not what we're using. We're using these sorry the paper smooches. I'm gonna be doing these for my craft show um, We're gonna use these this paper smooches. It's called um, I don't know what it's called. Oh swanky snow dudes That's cute. I'm gonna use this tall one this little guy and this medium guy um, and then the, the trees that I'm going to be using are actually from a Hero Arts stamp set. This stamp set. I just really like this tree, and it colors up really quickly and easily. And this little bird. This is another Hero Arts stamp set. Um, and it's just this little bird. I cut the tail off, but I just like this little attitude, how he has his head in the air. Um, and so that's it. So what you just need to do is find any stamps that you like that says what Christmas to you. It could be an angel. It could be, you know, whatever you want it to be. And you're going to go ahead and start to stamp those out. Like I said, I have, um, I'm going to put this to the side a little bit so that I can, I know I'm not going to bump into it. I've already stamped out quite a few. Um, and I'm just going to show you what I've done, uh, real quick for those of you beginners. Um, because it's a, it's a process. The, you know what? The first, the very first thing you want to do, though, is prep your uh, star. So it comes as paper mache. Um, paper is a porous surface, okay? When I painted for years, um, wood, I would paint on wood mostly uh, for the most part. And I we always would seal the surface somehow. And we weren't really into gesso. Gesso is something new for me. It's more, um, it's come into play more with the uh, mixed media. I would just use an all-purpose sealer and mix that with my paint to base coat because generally you were base coating your piece a solid color. And then once you've done that, let it dry. So in this case, I use gesso because all I really wanted to do is give it a little, um, make sure it's sealed so that the glue holds, so that everything, um, you want to prepare your surface. I mean, I am selling these, hopefully, and I don't want them falling apart. I don't want the paper to come off or anything, so it's really best to do the work. I hate the prep. I've always hated prep. You got to sand, you got to, you know, just base coat. I love the details, but you got to do the prep work to get to that part. So. 
Uh, all I've done is a light coat. Where did I put my star? Um, I guess it's this one. Um, a light coated gesso. And gesso is, I like this gesso. It's the Liquitex um, acrylic gesso. I don't know if it's any different than the rest of them. It's a, it's a paint. I don't know. It's opaque. It's a matte finish and it's fluid. It's about halfway fluid. I've gotten the one in the jar before, but I like this. You shake it up and you just squirt it out on your um, paint palette and it, it, I love it. I like this one because it squirts out. It's just easy access and easy to get to. Um, so that's what I used. I just put a light coat, like you can see, it's not, it's not completely opaque. It's still a little see-through. Let it dry and then give it a light sanding. I just use this fine, um, it's like a sandpaper pad or something, and um, I sand both sides and the edges just so that it's smooth again. Not you don't you have to sand the heck out of it. Just get that because when the, when the gesso dries, it has like a grit to it, and so you just want to get that smooth again. And then what I've done next is I've added this, the Martha Stewart Pearl, and this is the pearl color, but there are blue pearl, pink pearl, and all that. And I got this idea from. Um, T Nurse Tara, she always, she introduced me to this Martha Stewart Pearl Paint. She puts it as a uh, a base for a lot of her projects. So I've just taken that and gone around the edges. Because you're not going to see anything but the edges, really. You're, you're going to cover the ornament with paper. So then, once that's dry, so you can, you can base coat this red, green, blue, whatever. You don't even have to put paper on top the way I did. Like... The background paper you can just base coat it a solid color if you don't you know I mean do make use of the supplies that you have and you know add your own twist to it you don't have to follow this exactly then I've chosen some papers that are kind of snowy looking I'm gonna do because they are snowmen and I really like this color because then it was the bright blue I'm gonna I'm not doing this exact blue ball chain or anything I'm gonna change it up a little bit because this is more of a greenish blue and I've already traced it. Um, you know what? I'm going to go over what I've done. I've already traced. Trace your design, whatever you have, a circle, a heart, a, a star, onto your paper. And I'm just going to go over that with a, um, I guess a Sharpie would be fine. Or, well, just so that you can see it. Because when you cut it out, you're not going to cut on this line. You're going to cut about an eighth of an inch in, would I say an eighth? Yeah, an eighth of an inch in, so that when you're finished cutting, the star is gonna be on your star. You know, it's gonna be on here, but you're gonna have a little smidge of room around the edge like this. So you can see that, how there's just a smidge of room, so it's not perfect, like as, as a matter of fact, this side of that star goes much closer to the edge than that one. But that's how I went about doing that. So I'm going to, I mean, I guess I, I'm at eight minutes. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to get my cuddle, what are these called? Cuddle bug. No. So um, I hope you can see this, but I am going to cut just to the inside of that line. So you can see I'm not on the line. All right. So I'm going to go away and come back when I'm done. So I you can see how I've gone just to the inside of that line, okay? And my star is here. I kind of fudged it around. I turned cuz the way I traced it, I forget how I traced it now, but these aren't perfect. You know what I mean? It's made out of paper. It's wonky. The edges aren't, you know, completely square, but it fits on here just fine. Just for a little background color, and you can still see that pearl shining through. So that's all set. Um the one thing I didn't mention too is these come with this little um hanging string and I just pull that out because we're going to add our own hanging string um, with a little eye hook. Um, also it has a sticker on the back and I did my best to get them off. I didn't knock myself out. I Some of them come off better than others but um, 
if you can just get gesso over that, um, if there's any left, that's fine. Like that much is fine. Just so, just gesso over it, and then we're gonna glue um, the paper down to that. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is, you know what? We might as well. Oh, also, if you guys want to ink this up, if you guys are inkers, because I know a lot of you love to ink your edges, and it would look awesome. I haven't ever done that yet on any of my ornaments. I've just kept them clean, um, just with the paper. And so I won't be inking, and it's also an extra step, I feel. And if it's a gift for someone, or if it's some something special that you really wanted to add that effort, then um, go ahead. But I am selling these, and I'd like to make them as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible. So I'm not going to be um, adding any inking to the edges. So I'm just going to add my good old Scotch wet dry quick dry adhesive. This is my favorite wet glue of the moment. Um, I've mentioned before that there are so many different adhesives and I want you to use what you're most comfortable with, what you prefer, your favorite adhesive. I uh, mentioned that I do live in New Jersey and it does get humid here. We've had such a beautiful um, summer though and fall. Um, and I also use my tweezers when I'm gluing. I pick up my paper and I can line it up that way. It's just helpful. You still have a little fudge time when you use a wet glue. I say fudge time. I mean a little bit of time to smush it around into place so that you're comfortable. And I don't know that I put that where I had it initially, but that's okay. It is what it is. And you'd want to do that for the back as well. So you just trace your piece onto the paper and just cut a little bit inside that um, the line that you draw. Okay, so that's how, that's pretty much it for your star right now. Once you've painted it, um, sanded it, and then you glue your paper on, the next thing you want to do, oh, I was talking about adhesives. Um, a dry adhesive, I'm a big ATG fan. I have the big old pink one, and I love it. I do. I'm, I'm starting to get back to it more um, when making those mini albums. I have to say I did go back to it a little more um, than I thought and I'm just hoping for the best because I've had times when it comes unstuck. If the pe When the piece sits in the basement and it's damp down here, um, I'm finding that from time to time certain ones will be unstuck so I just don't like that to happen to things I make. Anywho, I'm um, going to set that aside. I'm going to pull in my images. Now I've already stamped these, like I said, on um, Nina Solar White cardstock. Um, that's the paper of choice people like a lot of times when you're using Copic markers. And Copics are an alcohol-based marker. They're expensive. Um, there are other brands out there. Uh, I can't think of the name of that other one now. Of course, I'm so brain dead, you guys. Um, Spectrum. <gasps> oh, excuse me. I just had a latte. <clears throat> Spectrum Noir, it's called. And, um, you know, I like, I love to color, and I love Copics. Um, and I'll probably continue to use them. I don't know um, if you want to invest in those. You can color these any way you want. Like I said, I used my Distress Inks to color these. And they look perfectly fine. They're a little more pastel-y. There are so many ways that you can color images. So just do what your favorite coloring technique is, and let's get started. So like I said, I use this BG10. That's the color that they suggest that you use when you're um, just trying to give white a little shadow. It's just a little shadow on your white. And of course, I'm on camera, and that was like totally off the line. But... All I'm going to do here is just give him a little shadow here and there. That just kind of brings him to life. And I'll do the same thing, maybe um, go around the back of his head and then under his scarf, down the side of the scarf, maybe along his arm. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason. You just have fun. Make it your own. No one's uh, hopefully going to be judging these. I don't, you know, people, they're going to love them. They're so cute. All right, so that's it. Like your snowman's basically co colored. I did use the um, blue, green, and red for my colors 
that I use to color in their hats and scarfs. So I'll just show you real quick. I'm not a professional Copic colorer. And I, like I said, a lot of my colors, I would usually use Prawn as my lighter red. And I, it's drying up, so I'm using this because it's nice and juicy. And then I'm using Lipstick Red R29 as my red. And I just, I don't even know if I'm on camera. Yes, I am. So this isn't, this isn't what I'm teaching you. I'm just trying to walk you through the process that I do to make this ornament. So basically, I'm just giving my images, oh, I'm coloring the wrong one. That's great. Because I got ink on him. See that? <laughs> oh, dear, Sarah. So I'm just going to color this hat again. And you know what? You don't even have to stay in the lines. Just try not to get it on um, the... Uh, the white of the snow because um, we're cutting these out so what I mean is you don't have to like be on the lines uh, on the top part but you just want to not get it on the snowman's face so anyway that's it I you know what I'm not I am not picky enough to get what color did I do I like green for their um this little guy has blue a blue hat Probably should use the lighter blue and blue buttons. Am I in the shot? Yeah, he's really far away though. I could zoom in a little. Um, but like I said, this isn't really about um, coloring. This is more about how I assemble this little ornament. So um, there are a lot of really good um, coloring tutorials out there that will be zoomed in and um you'll really learn a lot i am just having fun i mean you don't i'm not getting crazy about it so he's done i just need to do these two and they would be done but what i've already gone ahead and done that and cut them out so now i have my little images that we're going to use i did the little bird and i did two trees and all I did for my trees is I color them the background with a light green and then I just kind of like take a darker green and go over the branches. That's it. So not much to that. So here's our piece. And actually before I put this down, we're going to do a little trim around the edge of um, the star and put our hanger on. So I'm going to gather those supplies up and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I've gathered a few things. I just picked this up by the spool for a dollar at Joann's and I was looking for this trim on here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little bit bigger. This is the same thing, only it's a little narrower. So I'm going to use it. I'm going to go ahead and use it. I don't think the blue would look right, so I'm going to put some of the red bead chain on top of that. And then to hold and I use ribbon for the to hang it with just a piece of decorative ribbon any color is fine this happens to be silvery and um, silver and white um, I don't know I think I'm gonna go up a little higher uh, so I've also got these these are the little um, I plated screw eyes they call them um, these are usually in, you can find these in your wood department, like AC Moore and Michaels. They just are hanging with the little wooden bags of things. So, um, hopefully these aren't too small. I bought these for resin. You also want to try to find one of your ends that's a little bit more put together. That Because some of them have like cracks. So, I don't think that would be able to hold this eye hook in there. Um, so I'm going to kind of just screw it by hand real quick. I'm just going to push and turn. Just kind of push it in and then just screw it in. And I mean, it it's screwing in, so I'm pretty happy. Um, I could probably put a little bit of glossy accents on this at the end, and I think I will. Just around that bottom area to kind of give it that extra hold, but that's what I use to um, string my ribbon through. So we've done that. I mean, I also have actually taken my ribbon and gone all the way around the edge 
and come up to here, tied it, and use that ribbon as your tie as well. So like I said, this is just how I've done this. Please <laughs> use your own creativity because I am a copycat and I like when people show me what they did so I don't have to think about it. Um, and so that's what I'm just doing here. I'm just showing you what I've done, but by all means, do your own thing. So I'm using my favorite ribbon glue. This is Fabri-Tac, and this is a permanent adhesive. It bonds fabrics, lace, glass, leather, wood, and trims. I mean, pretty much everything. <laughs> um, it's just, excuse me, that latte. It's really sticky. See, look, and you get strings sometimes. It's kind of like hot glue a little bit. So I'm going to start right at the edge next to my... Uh, little um eye screw and just plop that down in the center hold it in place and gently walk it along the edge it really it dries pretty quickly too that's why I love it too um, like it and it's tacky see how I just touch that down and it like stays where you put it. It's it's really good. I can't recommend it enough. Aileen's has a tacky glue that people are really happy with too and I might try that next time too or just get that and have a try with that but as far as trims go, fabric, um, I just trust this. I've never, I mean I've put stuff on with my hot glue gun on a box or something and it it's fallen off. Like you can pull it off very easily. This does not pull off. At least I've never had that happen. So I'm just gently tapping it into place where I want it to stay. It's very sticky guys. So see look like now it's on my finger. So I just kind of go like this and it rolls right off. It'll roll up on your fingers so it's it's good that way too. It doesn't like doesn't burn, it doesn't hurt. I really like it. I can't rec I always say that, but I've I'm a very um, loyal glue girl, I guess. <laughs> when I find that one that works, I'm gonna stick with it. So I'm just continuing all the way around the edge. I am going to go away and cut the other piece of paper for the back put that on um, and I think I'm going to adhere the ball the balls to the edge too and if I have any trouble or if there's any um, thing I want to mention to you guys I'll mention it I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac and I'm just going to guide it along just like I'm doing here and touch it where I want it to stay just the way I've done this with that ball chain and it works because working with ball chain isn't the same as like a flat back pearl because flat backs will stay where you want them easier because the ball is round so that just gives it a little bling a little hint of something so I think that's good it's it's a little narrow I wish it was a little wider and I'm just gonna push it into the corners a little better and go away and come back. I'm going to put the, the back paper on and I'm going to let that dry a little while and just while I'm putting the other paper on then I'll um, put this red bead and this is you can get this all over the place. I mean I think AC Moore and Michael sell this for like a dollar. This is actually kind of a thick one. Um, I don't know if it's too thick. No, this is the same size as the blue. Um, I think that's going to look pretty. And you can still see the silver behind it. It'll be good. All right, but you gotta, um, I don't think I need to really do that on camera. Like I said, maybe I'll just do the last little bit of it so that you can see how I've done it. Um, but I'll go away and come back. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back and I did end up plugging in my glue gun. The, the balls, I mean, this has been sitting a while and it's, it's on there. It's just not, it takes longer, it's very tedious. So I just thought I'm gonna try my glue gun. So I'm just gonna do that. I only have this little bit. I mean it's on there with the Fabri-Tac. 
but I'm going to show this with a glue gun. And this is my old, oh Lord, come on. I don't know if my glue's hot yet. Yeah, it's hot. But you can only do like a little piece at a time. Stick it in there and hold it. Try not to burn yourself. But this dries so much quicker. I don't know that it's as secure because that's the thing about hot glue with me. I think you could just rip it right off there. But for, I don't want to give you a headache with this project. I mean, you don't even have to put this little ball stuff on here because it is a tedious process to get, um, sorry, I know I'm not on the shot, but my glue is not coming down. Um, I need to add another stick. The, uh, I just love the look of it, you know. It's really pretty when it's on here. But there are so many trims, different trims you could use. Just a piece of, um, ribbon, a regular ribbon. There's ribbon with fibers in it. Um, okay, so the star is pretty much complete. I'm going to add my um, characters to one side. Let's see, I kind of like, I think I like this side better. So I've got two trees and three snowmen. That's why I like the star for this project too. Like there's a, t I can stick one of the trees up really high and one kind of low because the snowmen are going to be in front of it anyway. And that way it looks like there's variation to the piece. This guy, he's tall, so I'm going to put him... I'm going to come down a little. Um, let him take up that whole side there. And I'm going to glue those flat directly onto the piece. I've already added pop dots to my medium size. This is the 3M tape that I love. And then for my little guy, I've added a little slightly bit higher pop dot. And I've got the 3M tape on my bird too. So I'm going to go ahead and add a apply these with my quick dry adhesive um, what else can I tell you guys so hopefully this hasn't been too horrible I have to go up and have a look at it um, but I do have a couple more to make so I can always redo it and that way once you've done it once I can kinda see where my mistakes are Oh, I have these stars as well. I have a couple of um, wooden stars. I also have these teeny little buttons. Let me show you these little buttons. You could use sequins, but I've put these with silver because I did use the silver on the edge. Um, I already put my silver leafing pen on these. These are wooden, but then I'm going to put silver stickles on them too. And then I did these too. These are the ones Mary Allen gave me. I have another one of these around here somewhere that I also put um, my silver leafing pen on, but I thought that would be cool, like one of those stars. All right, so anywho, uh, put some adhesive on this piece. So that was my last, I just changed my last battery. So hopefully I'll get through this and then I'll go have a look at what I did. So I'm just kind of lining this up. I have to have room for the star. So I'm going to put that all the way to the bottom. That's what I love about wet glue. You can move it around a little bit. I like to push down with a an older wet wipe, not like a brand new wet, wet wipe. All right, and I'm going to put my snowman down with the quick dry adhesive too because I want him flat up against the, the star. Hmm. Right there. He's a little hanging off on the top. I can take a Q-tip. I always, ever since I used to paint, I always had a Q-tip handy on my desk because you can fix mistakes and I'm just kind of swooping that um, glue out from behind his hat but he's on there good enough and then I have pop dots on this guy so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the backing of that 
and kind of position him where I want him. It's going to be overlapping a little bit. I kind of, I don't like the placement. I don't love the placement. I like it. It's good. But I, I can be a perfectionist even though I'm a good enough. It's kind of weird. I like to be good enough, but I also want it to be really nice. So he'll be down a little. But he's in, he's on like a little bit of a higher pop dot. I don't know if you can see the dimension of that. So that it gives the illusion that he's in front and front and front. So then I'm going to put my little guy, my little birdie, down in this corner. He's just with the, um, the 3M pop dots. These just give it enough lift. They're not really high, and I like that. And you can buy it on a roll. It's, um, it's usually kind of in the... Uh, It'll be in the uh, framing section sometimes at Michael's, but I get mine at Walmart. It's cheaper. And I'm just going to, I cut off his feet just to make it easier, but I'm going to put him right there. And then my stars, I'm going to put on top of the trees, obviously. Then I'm going to add stickles. I'm going to use Fabri-Tac for this. And I, I usually um, use Stickles, Wink of Stella. Um, you can use um, gel pens, like any type of blingy thing to just jazz it up, give it a little sparkle. I'll probably just use a thin piece of red ribbon to thread through. I could use white, red. Oops. Get that on straight. So for stickles, I like... There's a couple of, I have tons of white stickles, like crystal stickles. This one's called Icicle, Diamond, Icicle, and then there's another one that's uh, Diamond, but there's one other one. Anywho, um, it has a fatter nozzle, this one, Stardust. I'm pretty sure this is it. No, that has a thin nozzle. I'm going to use the Stardust for the um, snowmen. I just like to put a little bit maybe above his... Um, like snow sitting on there, you know, maybe a little above his buttons, um, a little above his scarf too, on his arm, and maybe on his little buttons, just maybe, it wouldn't be below his hat, but whatever. You can put it on his nose, on top of their nose, just to give it a little shine. I'll put it down his arm. All right, and then the silver, but I, what I was going to say was, this has a nice thin nozzle, and I like the color it comes out. This one's called Stardust, but one of them has a lot of blue glitter in it. Icicle. This one's like a fatter nozzle, and it comes out really fat, and it's like, um, it's got, like, this one even looks a little green, the diamond, but I really like the Stardust. And then I have the silver. This is just called, well, it doesn't have a name, actually. And I just rub this all over the stars. Kind of give that a little bling. I've kind of gone, I, I don't do glitter glitter, true glitter anymore as much. I just use stickles anymore. Because it's so easy, you don't have to get glitter everywhere. I get glitter everywhere when I use glitter. Maya and I made some Halloween masks last night and we had glitter <laughs> everywhere. And um, But that's it. So that's kind of pretty, right? And you put your little, hang your little ribbon through there. Let that dry and there you go. All right. So that's it basically. And like I said, I've done it with other stamp sets. This I used more of like a wallpaper paper behind it, I thought. You know, instead of like a snow scene, I kind of, it's a plaid. And then I used my um, glossy accents to make the the glass shiny and the, you know, and, and, the, and the little ball, uh, the lights hanging on the, uh, fireplace I made them shiny so don't forget to add your little accents I mean this you could definitely put more stickles around the edges and just really go crazy you could put a sentiment on the back it could say Merry Christmas it could say best wishes happy holidays whatever you want to do so that's it you guys I hope this comes out all right I'm going to go have a look and um, for those of you that requested it there it is and thanks for watching